Welcome everyone to this wintry Christmas Eve afternoon. Welcome to our online guests, to those of you who are in the overflow, um, and a special welcome to those of you who are visiting us for the very first time. Um, if you're here with friends or family, those are of you who uh, just found out we exist out here on the outskirts of Stony Plain and decided to join us, we're so thankful that you have chosen to come for this very um, special day of our Savior's birth, not to mention the very first Christmas in this building. So that's exciting for us. We love being a part of this community, and so later in the service, we're going to be letting you know about a special Christmas Eve collection um, we'll be making for a community organization that we get to partner with. And through over, oh, throughout Advent over the last month, we have been asking Jesus to come and break through our fear. We have said together, O come, O come, hope of the nations. O come, O come, king of love. O come, O come, joy of the world. O come, O come, prince of peace. Tonight we celebrate that he has come, that we do not need to be afraid. And so throughout the service, um, you're going to hear the refrain, Be not afraid, Christ is born this day. So whenever you hear, Be not afraid, I need you guys to say, Christ is born this day. We have some candles that you have been given to light up at the end of our service when the lights dim and we sing Silent Night. So kids, pay attention to that. Help mom and dad um, know when they need to turn the lights on. Tonight we're going to enter into the Christmas story through different, four different characters. And each one was afraid. Each one had an angel come to them and say, be not afraid. What were they afraid of? <laughs> good job, I heard that. Uh, why didn't they need to fear? What was the good news being brought to them? So kids, we have these booklets and they have four scenes in them. And that is going to help you to track along with us during the service. And you also have a little angel. So you get to play the part of the angel telling Zechariah, Joseph, Mary, and the shepherds to be not afraid. 
So you can watch for the symbols on the screen to know which story we're talking about. So let's get started. Be not afraid. Awesome. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we're gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, from God our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife, Elizabeth, was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commands and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was able to conceive, and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. 
But now since you didn't believe what I said, you'll be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Zachariah is an ordinary man, an ordinary priest, married to an ordinary woman, living an ordinary life. A life filled with the same kinds of joys and sorrows that are not uncommon to humanity. He had a meaningful job as a priest. He was seen as righteous, as right before God, and living with intention and obedience to the commands of God. And yet, as a couple, Zachariah and Elizabeth knew the sorrow and scorn of never having been able to have a family and raise a family, which was one of the most important things in their culture. And they had undoubtedly felt the disappointment of this desire and of their prayers for a child very keenly. And in the midst of this ordinary life, this obscure life, we find Zachariah on a very special and important day, a day when he'd been chosen and given the honor as the priest who would enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. And it's while Zechariah is dutifully carrying out his priestly role that day that the angel Gabriel comes to him, the first of several encounters with the angel Gabriel that Luke is going to tell us about. Obviously, Zechariah is shaken. He's overwhelmed with fear. And Gabriel reassures him with the words, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. What was Zechariah so afraid of, aside being visited by an angelic messenger? Do you think Zachariah ever wondered or feared in his life that God didn't see him or hear him? Or in all the years that he'd lived and all the things he'd seen and experiences he's had, do you ever think he feared that God wouldn't keep his promises to his people? Luke doesn't describe Zachariah as some great faith hero. In fact, his first reaction to Gabriel was almost to clutch at straws, so to speak. I need a sign that God will actually do what you've said he's going to do. And yet, like always, God still came to this ordinary man in his doubt and fear and half-faith. Zachariah isn't so unlike you and I in our perhaps obscure and ordinary lives. We all have things that cause us to be afraid, to question, to doubt. What are you afraid of? What do you doubt that God will do? This story is actually about the great fulfillment of God's promises and purposes. God is going to fulfill his promise. He's going to advance and proceed in his purposes for the restoration of humanity to himself, even if it's in some of the most puzzling and dramatic of ways. His son, the promised savior of the world, is going to come and soon, and John, Zachariah's son, is going to be used to help get ready for Jesus. And in the midst of the fulfillment of God's promises, we see that the needs, the hopes, the fears of ordinary people like Zachariah, like you and like me, they're not forgotten in this larger story. And when John was born and Zachariah's voice was returned to him, he, he declared these words and this prophecy over his life from Luke 1, 78 to 79. Because of God's tender mercy... The morning light from heaven is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us to the path of peace. In this season of Advent, each week we have physically marked the waiting and the journey of this season toward the celebration of Christ's birth with the lighting of Advent candles. We acknowledge that in our humanity and in our reality today, the ongoing collective expression and experience um, and pain of our losses can leave us very hopeless. But in lighting this candle of hope, we speak out so that our hearts might catch up to our head, that Jesus came and is the hope of the nations. We acknowledge in our humanity and our reality the we experience the pain of grief and sadness of those people and things we have loved and lost. But in lighting this candle of love, we speak out that Jesus came and is the reigning king of love. We acknowledge that in our humanity and reality, things are heavy. The world is heavy and we're burdened and hurt and some of us are battling significant fear. But in lighting this peace, this joy candle, we speak out that Jesus came and is the joy of the world. 
we acknowledge in our humanity and reality, we live lives affected, touch marked by the darkness of violence, war, addiction, poverty, homelessness. But in lighting this candle of peace, we speak out that Jesus came and is the Prince of Peace. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, said Mary, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Do not be afraid, Mary. When the angel appeared to her, Mary was troubled at first by his greeting. Did you catch what it was that he said to her? He appeared and addressed her first as the one who is highly favored by God. He assured her then that God was with her. Only after seeing her fear did the angel call her by her name. He said, do not be afraid, Mary. But why was Mary afraid? Being favored by God should be a good thing, a great thing even. To be seen by the Lord, to have him know you and choose you and call you by name. What an amazing opportunity, right? But Mary was a young girl. She wasn't the mother Mary as we know her, known and revered by all. She wasn't rich, she wasn't famous. She didn't have a following of any kind. She didn't even have a husband. I can imagine a new teen spending time with her friends, helping her mom in the house, doing the cooking and the cleaning, 
walking through the neighborhood, just another kid, just one girl in the midst of many, just a face in the crowd. When the angel appeared to Mary, do you think she ever wondered, why me? I certainly would have. That question has come up in my mind more than once in my own life. When I'm at school and you know you get called on by the teacher, when you're called to do a presentation at work, and even when I've heard God's call in my life, why me? And I think we all have times where we are called to something great, to stand up in the classroom and you know read that poetry assignment out loud, to step into an unexpected promotion at work, to go into the great unknown where God has called us beyond our wildest dreams or our wildest imagination. And in those moments, whether they're good or bad or scary, I'm sure we've all wondered in one way or another, why me? Why me? Mary was presented with not only a life-changing opportunity for her, but a world-changing opportunity. God noticed her, a face in the crowd, just a girl, just some young thing that nobody else really knew, nobody special. Why me, God? How can I be worthy of this? How can I do this great thing that you are calling me to? I am me. You are you, just a person, just a girl, just a guy, just individual faces in a crowd of seven billion people, really. So to think that God, the creator of the stars in the sky and the mountains and the sea would notice you to think that he would notice me as a person that he would call each of us his most favored children and then give us his son so that we would know Emmanuel God with us what was Mary afraid of being unworthy being too small too insignificant not being prepared being too young facing rejection, being shamed, failure, criticism, judgment, you name it. I mean, the same fears that run through our minds when we're faced with a call into something great and challenging or something scary and painful that threatens to break us. Those fears when we're thrown into the great unknown, I'm sure those are the same fears that Mary faced in her own young mind. But our God is faithful and loving. And we're reminded in this passage that he keeps his promises to walk alongside us, to love us, to fight for us, and to be God with us. For no word from God will ever fail. So Stony Plain Alliance Church, be not afraid. Christ is born this day. Joseph by her side is cast in
This is how the birth of Jesus and Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. but Before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to his son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Joseph felt his stomach drop as Mary shared the news what were previously feelings of joy and anticipation of becoming her husband were now replaced with that of betrayal and despair. Anxiety gripped his heart as these thoughts swirled around his head. How could she do this to me? We were about to get married. I gave her my heart and she ripped it out and chose someone else. Resolving to call divorce to protect both his reputation and hers, he lay down and closed his eyes for a fitful night of sleep. And as he was sleeping, an angel appeared and told him that Mary had in fact not been unfaithful, but had been given a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was in disbelief, and now a new question arose. What will people think about Mary being pregnant before we're married? They'll want nothing to do with us. This story shows two fears that Joseph experienced, betrayal and rejection. Betrayal at the thought that Mary had left him to have a child with another man, and rejection at the fact that his family would see her pregnant out of wedlock and would think that Joseph had broken the laws they had in place and would therefore not want anything to do with him. These two fears point to what Joseph was really afraid of, abandonment. Abandonment by Mary, the one he loved, and by his family. So I want you to ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Is there a deep fear that keeps me awake at night? And if so, what is it? What's that one thing that you push out of your mind day after day, too afraid to confront it? Are you afraid of being rejected, cast aside, or betrayed by someone you love? Are you scared of giving your heart to someone only to have it tossed to the side? Are you afraid of being abandoned, to be left alone? Maybe you're thinking that not only people have abandoned you, but God himself. Maybe you're telling yourself things like, I messed up bad and God doesn't want anything to do with me. Or, I don't think God cares enough about me, whatever else is going on in the world to bother sticking around. Maybe your mind is repeating to itself, God has abandoned me. Well, friends, I have good news for you. God is the God of love and faithfulness. He's the one who will never leave our side no matter what happens. Even if the entire world gave up on you, God wouldn't. Even if your family cast you aside, God would bring you in. If someone broke your heart into a thousand pieces, God would pick them all up and would craft them into something new and whole. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, and no matter what you're yet to do, God is going to stick beside you throughout all of it. He will never betray you, never reject you, never stop loving you. And how do we know this? Because he says in scripture, in Hebrews, it says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Secondly, through his son Jesus, Jesus came to take a punishment that we deserved upon himself so that we could escape our fate of death. He loves us so much that he suffered and died for our sake and rose again and defeated death, releasing us from its grasp. We will never be abandoned, and nothing can separate us from his love, as it says in Romans. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation would be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Be not afraid, Christ is born this day.
Let's do that again. Be not afraid. Christ is born this day. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quin Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. Let's stand and sing together. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Well, Merry Christmas. That's a weak sauce. Let's try that again. Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, it's good to be together this year, isn't it? It's good to celebrate. My name's Matt, if you don't know me, and I'm one of the pastors here. So be not afraid. Christ is born. <laughs> that wasn't what I was going to say, Shalina. You're just doing your own thing back there. <laughs> be not afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people, like when the worship director says stuff behind you. <laughs> That's okay. The shepherds were given this good news. That would be for all people. Good news for all people, not just some people. And in Israel at the time of Jesus, shepherds would be used to good news being just for some. Other people, to be exact. For the rich, for the powerful, for the elite, for, for even the commoners, just not for them. You see, they were on the lowest rung of the socioeconomic ladder. Now, we tend to have this idyllic idea of noble shepherds due to pageants, nativity scenes, and Christmas specials. We imagine shepherds to be honored or beloved because God would always compare himself to them. But that just wasn't the case. Shepherds weren't even the owners of their own sheep. They were just hired hands. They were often criminals who could only get work outside the city, away from everyone else. They were notoriously stinky kids, like super stinky. Imagine hanging out with sheep all the time. You could smell them coming. They were the riffraff, the thieves, the nobodies, the unworthy. In fact, it's recorded in the Mishnah, which is the writings of the ancient rabbis, that shepherds are incompetent, and no one should ever feel obligated to rescue a shepherd if they fall in a pit. Now compare this with what Jesus says. He says, imagine if you have a sheep and it falls in a pit, who wouldn't help them out? So Jesus assumes people will help out sheep, but the culture assumes nobody should help out a shepherd in the exact same situation. And it's to this group of people that God sends his messengers to announce the birth of his son. The angels proclaim good news for all people, even to shepherds. In fact, especially to shepherds. They're the first ones told. They're welcomed into the story. Secondly, though they are, or secondly, they are also honored because they are told this baby will be born in a manger. An animal's feeding trough. They're not called to go to a palace or an important civic center to see this baby. They don't have to have a confrontation with power or make their way through guards or soldiers or anything like that. Instead, they can silently enter the place where they often go, a place where they're familiar, a place where animals live. This king they've gone to see 
isn't detached from them by power or status or influence. Instead, he understands their world and what it's like. It's one of the first clues we get in the Gospels about the upside-down nature of the kingdom of heaven, where those the world dishonors are honored. Right from his birth, Jesus is identified as a servant king. This baby will be a source of peace, much like the prophet Isaiah says. In fact, he calls him the prince of peace. And it's not peace as in an absence of conflict, but instead peace as wholeness. Peace as everything in its right place. Peace as renewed and restored relationships. Joy and peace are available to the shepherds, to these nobodies. And why? Well, because Jesus is the Emmanuel. Jesus is the God with us. Jesus has become one of us, and he's moved into the neighborhood. And as a result, nothing will be the same. The incarnation of Christ has changed everything. And friends, joy and peace weren't just for those shepherds 2,000 years ago. Joy and peace are available to us today through Christ Jesus as well. Jesus longs to give us a deep joy that's not dependent on circumstances and a peace that surpasses all understanding. But let's be honest. Joy and peace can feel quite distant in these days, can't they? Our experience of the world has been so different than we're used to. Our province, our friendships, even the church, our families feel so divided in these days. This pandemic and masking and vaccinations and everybody's response to those things feels like it robs us constantly of joy and peace. It can feel like we're like the shepherds, that peace, joy, and good news are for someone else at some other time. Maybe the you of 2019, or the you of when this pandemic is over. It's maybe for someone whose family all agrees on vaccines or non-vaccines. Anyways, for another time and another place. But the good news today is because he's born, you don't need to be afraid. Where fear is gripping you, stealing peace from you, he wants to exchange that for his perfect love that drives away all fear. Where anger sits just below the surface, he wants to meet you in it and show you how to experience peace in its place. Where despondency, Netflix, and escapism feel like they're numbing you, he wants to replace that with his joy. The good news of Jesus' birth is that he is not distant from you. He's not removed from your experience, unaware of what it's like. No, not at all. Instead, he's taken on flesh, He's become one of us. He's moved into the neighborhood. That means he understands, he cares, and he is with you. And he wants you to be with him. And in your being with him, he won't tell you to try harder. He won't demand things of you like, don't be afraid. Be joyful, be peaceful. That's not what he'll say. Instead, through his spirit, he will abide in you and grow in you. His spirit is not one of fear. And joy and peace are part of the fruit that his spirit grows in us. And so, will you let him be with you? Will you allow him the space to work in you? Will you allow him to be the God with us, anew in you again today? Will you partner with him to allow him to do his work in you? And will you exchange your fear, anger, and worry for love, joy and peace and if you're wondering will God see me does God does God care would he even notice me don't forget who the first good news came to all those years ago not to kings or princes or religious leaders not to temples or palaces or civic centers but to nobodies in a field in the middle of nowhere and so today we mark the end of Advent We've lit the candles of hope, love, joy, and peace. And tonight we recognize that all these things have their culmination in Christ. That due to the incarnation of Christ, God being made flesh, fear no longer rules the day. 
And so know this as we light the candle. Jesus loves you, and he's inviting you into a whole new way of life that takes fear and exchanges it for hope, love, joy, and peace. And so be not afraid. We've been partnering with the Parkland Food Bank this Christmas season um, with our giving tree and our toy drive, and it was a wonderful experience as a, a church community to collect all the gifts and gift cards that the food bank is going to put in the, the food hampers they were giving out this season. But we also know that the first few months of a new year are always when financial donations are lowest for the food bank, and yet the needs in the community to give out food hampers does not diminish. And so we want to bless the Parkland Food Bank with a generous donation to start out 2022 and we want to invite you tonight uh, or this afternoon if you would like to give towards that to uh, to give a financial gift. Uh, we regularly practice giving here at SPAC as part of our response to the good news to be not afraid because Christ is born today. And so if you'd like to give a donation today, just stop by the info center on your way out. I'll be out there to answer any questions or to help you. We can accept gifts or cash and put those in our deposit box. We also have a debit and credit machine. You can also give online. There's multiple ways to give, but you can find that on our website. Um, so we just invite you to consider that and partnering with us to bless the Parkland Food Bank um, as they begin 2022. Thank you. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin.
invite you to pull up your candles and sing Silent Night with us. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been good uh, to celebrate the birth of our King together. I invite you to come back out on Boxing Day as we explore uh, the Incarnation more, and then on January 2nd as we return back to our series in the Gospel of Mark. And so as you go, may you going, may you go knowing that Christ is there and you have nothing to fear. May you go in the hope, love, joy, and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Christ be born anew in you tomorrow morning. So be not afraid, because Christ is born this day. Go in the grace and peace.